Intuitive eating is a hot topic and for good reason, it's amazing. But there are a lot of misconceptions out there when it comes to information that's being spread about it. Honestly, it's a lot of bad advice, kind of what I call like faux intuitive eating. In this video, I'm gonna explain what true intuitive eating is, how you can go about starting to learn it for yourself, and also debunk some of the myths that you're probably seeing spread, like I said, all over social media. If you feel like you've tried intuitive eating before, be sure to comment below. Let me know what your experience is. I definitely wanna hear from you, and I think this video is gonna help. Intuitive eating has honestly changed my life for the better, definitely, and now it is what I help thousands of other learn how to do, become intuitive eaters inside the Society Intuitive Eating community. And it lights me up every single day, so I'm so excited to share a piece of that with you. If you are as excited as I am to learn more about this, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, hit subscribe down there, especially if you're new to the channel and you stumbled along this. Hi, I'm Colleen, non-diet intuitive eating registered dietitian. I'm your guide to all things intuitive eating. Be sure to, like I said, to subscribe, we got way more intuitive eating content, tons of videos already posted, but a new one every week. And with that, let's dive into what intuitive eating is. So intuitive eating is not a diet. Intuitive eating is not a weight loss plan. Intuitive eating is a approach to food and nutrition meant to heal your relationship with food and body. It's really about working with your body and getting back to your intuition, which our bodies, we are all born as intuitive eaters. We knew when to turn our heads away when we were full. We'd cry when we were hungry. We had that intuition, right? And it's about regaining that because diet culture has taken that from us. Us, right? Because of all the diets and the food rules that we've followed, we lose touch with our intuition over time. So it's about getting back to that. It's really about marrying our internal cravings, those desires, those cues that our body is giving us with the external knowledge that we have about nutrition information, health knowledge, those sorts of things. I always explain it as like a Venn diagram where intuitive eating is really the middle of those. It is where we take both of those things into consideration, but those circles can also ebb and flow, right? And I feel like one big thing that people get wrong about intuitive eating is that that external knowledge doesn't come into play. But remember guys, when we say listen to your body, our brain is also a part of our body. A lot of people have extrapolated some of the principles of intuitive eating and have used it in terms of weight loss, but intuitive eating is really weight neutral. So weight gain, loss and maintenance is not the goal. They all can happen with intuitive eating, but the goal is to get to the place where your body wants to be, where it feels best. That's what's called your set point weight. Now that is a very, very high level. I have more videos in the description that I can link that go over what intuitive eating actually is in more detail. I'll link to that for you, but for now, that is our high level overview. Okay, so now that we have an overview of what intuitive eating is, I'm gonna give you five steps that you can take today to start implementing intuitive eating because this whole idea that we see on social media of, okay, just listen to your body, is not the first step because guys, we don't know how to listen to our body after years of dieting. We have to relearn it. So here are the steps that I'd recommend. First things first, guys, I would recommend actually reading the intuitive eating book. Yes, it is a book. It is filled with 10 principles of intuitive eating. It's been around for a while. This is not a brand new approach. This is actually the fourth edition of the book. This is one of the previous editions. I would recommend starting here because it's really gonna help you understand a lot of some of the BS about intuitive eating that goes around on social media and it's just nice to kind of get it from the source, you know? So I definitely would recommend this. When it comes to which edition should you read, I think that whatever you can get your hands on obviously is gonna be best. For instance, if your library only has a later edition, that's fine, you can start there. You could also ask them to update it and get the new edition, but I honestly think that anything is better than not reading the book. So definitely start there. They also do have a workbook. I would really recommend starting with reading this book. And I was actually talking with Elise Resch, one of the co-authors, and she does have a teen intuitive eating book. And she was suggesting people could also start with that because it's a little bit more digestible, a little bit more kind of like easy language, not that this is hard by any means, but this also does come on Audible so you could listen to it there. But I really, really recommend that. I recommend everyone in the society, my intuitive eating membership community to read it as well. And I find that those who do read it really have the most success. I'm curious, comment below if you did not know that intuitive eating was a book, let me know. I'm always so blown away by how many people don't know. It's great that social media is spreading the news, but we want to, like I said, just make sure that we know where the actual information is coming from. Okay, so then the second tip that I have for you, if you're looking to 
to start intuitive eating is to focus first on the biological and really the neurochemical side of things. So what I mean by that is focusing on eating enough, right? Allowing yourself not to restrict the overall amounts of foods that you're eating. And that's going to allow you to regain your hunger and fullness cues. Focusing on our body's kind of overall needs. I do recommend focusing on that first. You can also notice things. What is satisfying to you? What makes you feel your best? This is really kind of that body attunement piece. And then you can also start the brain rewiring process, which is essentially, again, unlearning all the diety messaging that we've been taught. The second step after you focus just on that part, just allowing yourself to eat to satisfaction, eating enough, getting those hunger cues, that's then where I recommend focusing more on what I call the psychological piece or breaking your food rules, right? I feel like on social media, it's always kind of shown as doing it both at once, but I kind of don't recommend that, right? I recommend focusing first on the biological, then the psychological, because that's actually gonna make breaking your food rules much easier. In this stage, you're also going to allow yourself to eat the food, yes, but but you're going to really neutralize food and you're not going to view it as good or bad, unhealthy, healthy. You're going to see it as food. Are carrots the same thing as chocolate? Absolutely not. But are they morally equal? Yes, that is how we prevent that pull. Oh my gosh, gotta eat the chocolate. I feel like the chocolate has the power over me. That's how we neutralize the food and take the power back. I recommend doing this in more of a stepwise process versus doing it all at once because doing it all at once is typically too overwhelming for the average person. And it can instill a lot of that all or nothing thinking that we're so used to from diet culture. And it gives you a little bit of motivation and it helps you feel better physically during the process because you're not changing a million things about your diet at once. First, we change the overall amount of food, make sure that we're getting enough. Then we change the types of foods, right? There's a lot of steps to it. There's a lot of benefits to doing it more slowly, more methodically. And that's what I teach in the society. I also recommend starting with the easiest food rule and working to hardest to allow yourself to get some motivation and just confidence in the process as you go. The fourth tip that I have for if you are wanting to start intuitive eating is to also focus on not just the food, but also body image and exercise. So with that, we have an entire stage devoted to that in the society to learn that. But a lot of times we're so focused on making peace with food when if we tie it back, a lot of the reasons that we have issues with food in the first place is because we're trying to change our bodies, right? So that's really important to address as well. Then honestly, step number five is to tie and judge nutrition. So nutrition does play a role. I talk about nutrition a lot on my channel and I feel like sometimes that surprises people when they think intuitive eating, okay, I'm going to watch her eat donuts all day and whatnot, but I do eat a lot of nutrient dense foods and it's key to go about implementing judge nutrition a at the appropriate time. Notice how it's number five, the last tip. It's not one of the first tips because we do have to put nutrition on the back burner, but it is important to incorporate it. I feel like I get DMS all the time telling me, Hey Colleen, I'm trying to eat intuitively, but I don't feel good. Are you tying in judge nutrition? Because that is part of intuitive eating. So that's really how I recommend going about approaching intuitive eating. Now let's talk about some of the advice that you're going to hear on social media that I would recommend avoiding. So I know there's this idea of going all in, and I think we need to reframe what that means because Typically for the average person, like I've said, focusing on all the things and trying to do all the things at once, I've actually talked to the least rush about this, is typically too overwhelming for the average person. And I know there's this idea of going all in, which first of all, I have a blog post that talks more about it, but all in was not necessarily developed as an approach to intuitive eating. I talk about a lot of in the book, no period now what, but you could go all in and just say, I am doing this right. All in doesn't mean you have to start eating all the foods at once. It's more of, I think use that as like a proclamation to say, I'm going all in on this process, but maybe the step you take today is just to get the book, right? I think we need to, get rid of this all or nothing thinking that we have and allow ourselves to understand that it's okay to dip your toes in the water. That's likely going to be a much more sustainable approach versus what I felt like happened to me and what happens to literally so many people that tell me this on a day to day basis is that, you know, I took 80 steps forward one day and then 85 back. I'm not knocking it. And I'm not saying you definitely shouldn't do that, but just know that that's not the only way. It is a very radical way to do it. And I think why it's it's gotten a lot of attention on social media, but I don't think it's the only way, nor should I think we have to set ourselves up to necessarily do that. And like I said, there is also the gut 
stuff that happens when you change a lot of things in your diet at once. So that's why I personally like to work a little slower. Don't set your, these expectations for yourself and don't put yourself in a box that says, I have to follow what this person did, right? Feel it out for yourself. Allow yourself to make that dedication in a way that works for you. Get rid of that all or nothing thinking. Advice to avoid kind of going along that is to stock your pantry on day number one. I really don't recommend this because like I said, it can feel very overwhelming. And then that's where we get to, okay, well, I don't know what I want to eat. Now I feel like I'm doing something wrong because I don't know. Again, I recommend going through your food rules one by one, starting with the easiest, working towards the hardest and working through those, right? It is a stepwise process that's okay to do. Again, get rid of that all or nothing thinking. Advice to avoid last one here is that intuitive eating is a great way to lose weight, right? There's so much of that on social media and it's like I said, intuitive eating is weight neutral. A lot of people extrapolate pieces of it and use it for weight loss, but the actual intuitive eating book and what it truly is, is not a way to lose weight. Weight loss does, it can happen, right? Weight loss, gain, maintenance can all happen with intuitive eating, but it's not the goal, right? Making peace with food, making peace with their bodies is. And for some people, when they do that, they might lose weight. Others are gonna gain and others are gonna maintain. It is not right or wrong, but you start to feel better mentally, physically, emotionally, all the things. But if someone is saying, I'm gonna use intuitive eating to help you lose weight, that is the goal, probably don't really know what they're talking about too, in terms of actual intuitive eating. Okay guys, I hope this video was helpful in giving you an idea of where to start with your intuitive eating journey. We go over all of this stuff in way more detail in the Society Intuitive Eating community. I will link to all of that in the description for you if you're ready to take it to the next step. Let me know if this video was helpful. Give it a thumbs up. That's how I know you liked it. Be sure to subscribe, especially if you're new here. I want to keep sharing wisdom with you. And with that, you guys, I will see you next week with another video. Lots more intuitive eating content coming for you.